Welcome into K-State Online. I'm Mason Voth, joined by Derek Young. We are here on this Monday, first day of April, and really the first wave of significant transfer portal news involving K-State basketball is coming our way. We have known, hey, they're going to be pretty active. They lost a handful of guys, but now we start to have some concrete info on dudes that are seriously interested in K-State. It's not just, hey, K-State's reached out to this guy or this guy. We have players that have made their way to Manhattan, and both of them are from Michigan, and both of them are guys that are high priorities, not just for K-State, but other teams throughout the country. Both rank inside the top 20 of the on three transfer portal ranking. So, D.Y., what, uh, what more can you tell us about Doug McDaniel and Terrace Reed, who made visits to Manhattan over the last couple of days? Yeah, Doug McDaniel's actually on campus right now. So his visit is underway. It's uh, transpiring as we sp speak. And, you know, that's one of the major guards in the country that is available that, you know, just about anyone in the country would like to have on their campus. So uh, that that's a huge move for Kansas State. Uh, it, it, more of a guy that can handle the ball, probably much better than, than some of the options that Kansas State had this year. So it would be definitely uh, a move in the right direction. I mean, that would be a home run if, if they land him. Uh, there's no way around it. He was just at TCU. Um, someone that's from the, you know, Washington, D.C., Maryland, Virginia area. He actually attended the same high school in Virginia as Patrick Gongba. So um, uh, interesting connection on that front as well. Uh, two years of eligibility remaining. Uh, he just shot 37% from three. Yeah, he wasn't on a good team, but he averaged 16 points, five rebounds, and or 16 points, five system, four rebounds. So <laughs> nothing to sneeze at his team. Teammate Terrace Reed, uh, I wouldn't call him like a incredibly mobile big, but one that was still able to be effective. One of you look at the advanced numbers, he's probably one of the better rebounders in the entire country. Um, you, you, some, probably sometimes have to hide him a little bit on defense. I would think, I don't, I don't know. I'd have to look at his game a little bit more. I think he's probably a little bit more mobile and a little bit more athletic than he's, what he's given credit for. He probably can lose a little bit of weight here and there, but, uh, you know, just because of the position, the, the, the supply and demand aspect of it, I imagine that he's going to be someone that's chased hard by, Several different programs as well. He was recruited by K-State at a high school. That was when the Wildcats still had Bruce Weber as head coach. He played for Rodney Perry at both um, AU Team Mocan and then at Link Academy as well in Branson, Missouri. Uh, just uh, another – I mean, I, I imagine that they'll have a number of different targets at both of these positions, but to get both Reed and McDaniel on campus as early as they did – is pretty impressive. Reed averaged nine points and seven rebounds. Now, I know people are going to kind of cringe a little bit and say we're, we're, we're looking at two guys. The first two guys we're looking at are coming from a program that that is basically imploded in the last year and a half, and that's totally true, and, and I can't really convince you otherwise if that's something that you're going to hold on to because I can't change the fact that Michigan was not a good team, but that doesn't mean that they didn't have some really good individual parts. Well, and that's also like basically saying that Marquise Noel sucked because he played for Bruce Weber on that K-State team before Jerome Tang got here. Uh, the now, one, that K-State team was not, not as bad as, as this Michigan team was, but the point still stands. And I think if you know that, that K-State team that had Marquise Noel was anywhere else and you were taking somebody from that, you'd be like, why are we doing this? The individual parts can be better than the total sum of it. I, I'd actually, that's a perfect example because that K-State team did not uh, come close to making the NCAA tournament, of course. You mentioned Marquise Noel the following year. He goes to the Elite Eight with Kansas State. Nigel Pack was on that team as well. Yeah. The following year, he went to the Final Four with Miami. Yeah, that's true. It's you, There are loads of examples of it out there. Guys just are in spots that, that doesn't end up working out. And we know that Jawan Howard has been a disaster of a head coach. A lot of these guys that come from the NBA and immediately start as a hit as a head coach somewhere, it just has not worked. I mean, Penny Hardaway's probably been the most successful one of them. And 
there's a lot of question marks there. And if Memphis was playing in any other league than the American, it might be a little bit tougher on even what it's been for them. So I think that, you know, there's a lot to take into consideration with the Michigan situation uh, and, and everything. But obviously, Doug McDaniel is a guy that anybody should and would want because if you look deeper into how things went, obviously the scoring's there, the shooting's there, which K-State desperately needs after last season, the 37% that Doug McDaniel shot. Uh, I'd have to go confirm, but I think that it would even be better than what Arthur Kaluma finished the season as. And then another big deal is, I mean, the assist to turnover ratio for Doug McDaniel was pretty high. It was essentially five to two. So that's a that's a good mark for somebody to come to K State who needs to fix that problem that they had. And uh, I think Doug McDaniel would be a good start for them, obviously in the portal. Now, one of the points that I'll, I'll make on Taurus Reed is that I know that some people have been a little bit disappointed in in you know, K-State looking at him, I guess, because they look around, they say, hey, I'm not all that impressed. There are some questions about mobility and, and other things that go into it. Um, and I I had people that watch the Big Ten much closer, closer than I do say that uh, Terrace Reed's not very good. But what people have to consider in all this is you're trying to build a roster. You're not trying to build an all-star team. I mean, that would be great if you could, but it's unrealistic. Somebody has to be the fourth or fifth best transfer that you bring in if you're K-State this offseason. And I think a guy that is a sophomore average nine and seven in the Big Ten on a bad team uh, and started almost every game, I think you take that. I don't think that that is a, a, a loss by any means. Like, yes, there are things that he can get better at and he's not going to be a star for you. But as a fourth or fifth option, because I think that's what you would expect this to be for K-State, um, I, I don't think that's a bad, a bad outcome for them. So I think it's, it's good to keep perspective that we've come to think of the transfer portal as getting these dynamic players like Keontae Johnson or, you know, Naquan Tomlin wasn't a portal guy. He was just a Juco guy, but of the same ilk, you think, okay, you're getting high impact immediately. Not everybody has to be that somebody else has to come in and serve a role. And I think certain guys can, and, and Taurus Reed might be one of those guys. Yeah, I mean, any it's a guy that started 31 games at the Power Four level still. Mm -hmm. So you, you just if that's where you're swinging, it's it, it, on the surface. I think it's fine. Uh, obviously, another guy that you know struggles at the free throw line. You worry a little bit maybe about his defense, although you probably had pretty good experience and. And dealing with that, but having Will McNair this year, and I think he's probably even a better defender than Will McNair, or at least is a little bit more mobile than Will McNair, an elite rebounder. Um, the, the the two things you probably worry about a little bit is the turnovers and his defense, uh, not, and not narrow, necessarily his defense in general, just his defensive limitations and how he can be exploited. But I'm with you, uh, and it's not even to say that Kansas State's going to land Terrace. Like I said, I think both both sides probably have multiple options here, so we'll see what happens. I think uh, they they probably, or you know, Terrace Reed's in the mix, but more than anything, I think they want to get Doug McDaniel locked down. Uh, and go back to your NBA thing. You're right, guys that come from the NBA really struggled. You mentioned Penny Hardaway maybe being the best, which from from. Uh, that standpoint, probably true. But here, here's one interesting guy that technically came from the NBA as well. Uh, no one really recognizes him as a player, obviously, but as an NBA assistant coach. Or is actually Eric Musselman was an NBA mm -hmm. guy before he was a college guy. So and and that was kind of you have to date back a little bit to to reach that. So that probably makes your point anyway. But then you got the two that were absolutely probably the worst and Chris Mullen and Patrick Ewing. Um, those guys couldn't even win games for the most part. And then you, you're basically seeing what Damon Stoudemire is he the one at Georgia tech right now. Yep. It's not, yep. nece not necessarily catching his stride. Jerry Stackhouse uh, got fired from Jerry, Vanderbilt. Yeah. Jerry Stackhouse just got axed as well though. They were a little bit impatient with him. I probably thought, but uh, they, but you could say that they upgraded anyway, though with going with the James Madison coach. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Eric Musselman is the one that like you go back a few years. Uh, I was stunned when I 
saw his uh his resume i was like this guy was the head coach of the warriors and the kings at one point like blew my mind but he did i you know i think he had a pretty graceful transition because after he was done head coaching the kings he was you know he had some time doing other things but before he got back into college he was doing like d league stuff for the nba which is probably a pretty good hybrid of college and nba so it was like he got his toes wet and then he uh was an assistant in a couple of spots before he got the Nevada job. And obviously he's done well, but yes. And that's kind of like a slow build because his first head coaching job, it wasn't, you know, big time. It was Nevada. And he kind of jump started where Nevada was. It's a good job for Mount West. Everybody else. I, Mike Woodson obviously didn't have a good year, but I would, you know, Mike Woodson might be the most successful out of uh, the true NBA to college guys immediately. So it's a tough thing to, to pull off. And he's probably going to get fired next year. Yeah, yeah, if, yeah. If, unless some miracle happens for them, so that is uh, kind of what's going on. Doug McDaniel and Terrace Reed. One other interesting point there uh, that's been brought up, and I think you can find some some breadcrumbs of it, is that these guys were roommates at Michigan. So there's there's a maybe a little bit of a tighter connection, or I don't know. You might get scared that on an eight win team, maybe that's actually a bad thing to have guys that live together uh, be be recruited by the same spot. But do you think that's a benefit to K State? Yeah, it, it depends, like, you know, what their intentions are here. Obviously, I think uh, if, if they go all out and they say, man, we just desperately want both of these guys, you think that's a pretty good pitch that you can make, especially since, you know, K-State was the second visit for Doug McDaniel. It was the first visit for Terrace Reed. It'll be interesting whether either of these two take another visit between now and when the, the transfer portal, the, the debt period. Uh, actually uh, starts, which I think is April 4th. So that's Thursday. So not a whole lot of time, even if they did want to take another visit. Now Terrace Reed probably has some time, but Doug McDaniel's visit's not going to finish what until Tuesday. Yeah. So he's got like one day and boom, it's the dead period. So uh, almost good planning on the part of Kansas State too, because it's, it's, a, it's a dead period that basically lasts for a week. So then you have a week to close them before he can take maybe potential other visits. Yeah. So, I mean, probably a pretty crucial next seven to 10 days for K-State to see how things go for Doug McDaniel, who did visit TCU prior to coming to Manhattan. Uh, I mean, I know it's early in his visit and there's a lot going on and more teams could jump into the mix or try to, but at least in terms of McDaniel, uh, if you had a pick between K-State and TCU, who do you think would have the edge there? I would say K-State, uh, uh, and uh, and I don't know that yeah no hesitation there too so that kind of tells you where I'm at I just I, there's pretty good feelings around this one at the moment. All right, well those are the two guys that have been on campus for K State. Uh, we'll let Dy get out of here pretty quick, but a couple of quick hitters for everybody. Cam Carter announced that he was committed to LSU. Probably a good spot spot for Cam Carter. Uh, because that's a team that's still trying to build and push their way over the the hump. Matt McMahon is down there. Uh, obviously, K State's gotten to face LSU the last two seasons and seeing what they are and get to play them this year in Bramlage, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So yep. this is probably a good fit for Cam Carter. He can go there. He can be the star and gets to go back home. Uh, what do you make of Cam Carter heading back to Louisiana? Yeah, absolutely. It's probably you know. I think he had a better chance of winning at Kansas State than he does at LSU. But for an individual perspective, he probably found himself in an even better ideal spot because I think Kansas State was going to wanted to keep him maybe in that third, fourth option, probably department, wheelhouse, neighborhood, whatever you want to call it. At LSU, you know, it'll be dependent upon what else they have around him. But I would be surprised if he's not a top two option there or at least can thrust himself into that, you know, spot and you're going back home. Um, you, you probably got paid, you know, as much as you wanted to. Yeah, good NIL money, I'm sure. Yeah, so I, th- there's not a lot of ways where this doesn't make sense and and doesn't put Cam probably in an eye. And who knows, you know, I like Cam Carter, the person. I think he had – I think he cared a lot about Kansas State. I think he – I think he played hard for the most part. Um, And I'll have good memories of him regardless, just because he was still a pretty integral figure on an elite eight team that was a whisker away from a final four. So I hope the best for him. 
and just being back home, you know, you could you don't have to squint too hard to see him taking off in an LSU uniform. Yeah, I think it's probably a win-win for both sides, given the, the kind of the levels that we're going to go on there. Uh, final thing, Transportal going to continue being a thing for people to worry about. Uh, anything that might be a good teaser for people to head over to kstateonline.com to, to try and figure out so they're in the know on the portal if K-State's got other targets lined up to get on campus either before the dead period or after the dead period, and then uh, is, is the roster set in the stone or is K-State possibly going to lose anymore? I think there's more action to be had beyond just Terrace Reed and Doug McDaniel. So, uh, yeah, K-State Online is a great place to kind of uncover and, uh, you know, unpeel those onions, uh, uh, layers of those onion, of course. But uh, in terms of exits, as, you know, the transfer portal is open for 45 days. Um, I forget what the exact date is for the close this year. Is it May 1st, I want to say? But it's a 45-day period. So, as long as that baby's open, uh, you're recruiting your own roster and making sure player retention is still um, a, a successful endeavor. And what I would say is another thing is when you bring kids in, sometimes kids go out. So you got to keep an eye on it. So it's never it's never done. And I think there, there still might be one or two things that happen um, before the end of that transfer portal window when it closes. All right, good reason for everybody to head over to kstateonline.com. Find it at On3. While you're there, you can also go check out the On3 transfer portal rankings because, as I mentioned earlier, the two visitors that K-State had over the weekend, both inside the top 20, both are going to be highly sought after, especially Doug McDaniel. You get that scoring, the shooting, everything that comes with it. Uh, that's a pretty impressive guy that a lot of teams would like to line up. So K-State in a good spot right now. They'll get to finish off the visit over the next couple of days, and who knows? Uh, we'll see if K-State can get a commitment sometime uh, in the near future from anybody so they can start building the roster and the excitement continues to go up. So for Derek Young, I'm Mason Vo. Thank you for watching and listening to K-State Online. We'll be back again tomorrow to talk a little bit football with everybody. But for now, we're out of here. And uh, yeah, just go make sure you're, you're checking out KSO. And uh, then you won't be out of the know when you're talking to your friend and they bring up, oh, yeah, I heard this name come up and you've never heard of this guy before. Get a little pre-scouting in. Figure out who these dudes are so you sound like the smartest cat fan to uh, all of your friends and family.